As a little kid I used to love football. Playing, watching, collecting cards with famous football players, you name it. I especially liked it when I was playing it with my friends. My parents have always been kind of protective. The worst type of parents a child would want. Because of that they would never allow me to play football with my friends from school. They were always saying things like, it's too dangerous, or, what if you get hurt? After some time I got used to the idea of not going out with my friends. So I started finding other things to do after school. It's actually incredible how many things you can do and enjoy in your house. But the one thing that I loved was when my grandpa was telling me stories. Every evening after dinner, I used to go to his bedroom and ask him for a new story. He would always respond with a calm and warm, come on the bed, what kind of story do you want to hear today? I never knew how to answer this question. It's an easy one, I know but I loved all of his stories. His funny stories were the funniest in the world. His adventure stories were the most interesting. But there was one type of story I didn't want to hear. One that would keep me, even as a child, awake at night. His horror stories. They have always been, too realistic. And not only that but his face. Oh his face. He always had a calm and friendly face. But when it was time for horror stories he was becoming cold as ice and hard as a stone. And he was telling these stories with such details that it was making you feel like he was actually there, like he actually experienced those horrible and gruesome things. Now you might ask, but if you were so scared of them, then why didn't you just always tell your grandpa to not tell those stories? That's because of my problem. My personality problem. The thing that will make me do the most regrettable thing of my life. My inferiority complex. Always trying to prove that I was a man. A big boy how others might say. I was trying to prove to my grandpa that I wasn't scared of him or his stories. But I was. I have always been scared. When I was 12 a miracle happened. My parents let me go and play football with my school friends. I basically went crazy about it. But that was until my mom told me one rule that I will have to follow. You see, I was living about 15 minutes from the place where my friends were always playing. It wasn't such a big deal during the day but during the night. Well, let's just say it wasn't the most pleasant place you wanted to be at that moment. It was basically just a straight line but hardly illuminated or not at all sometimes, old houses and huge old trees on both sides and sometimes even one or two starving wild animals. They were most of the time just dogs but still, a 12YO is 12YO. So my mother told me that I could walk there during the day but during the night she will come to pick me up. I was annoyed at this idea. But I just went with it. Because after all, I was finally allowed to go out. First days came and went. Me and my friends were just having fun as all boys have when they play a good match of football. My mother was coming every evening and taking me home. I have always felt safe around her. I know I know that's what a parent's job should be, right? But it was another level of security that I had around her. One that would make me feel almost dot well dot untouchable. That's maybe why I felt it. More like sensed it. The feeling of insecurity and even fear that she had. She was always being careful on that street. Always holding my hand tight. Always looking left and right, left and right, left and right at those damn houses and trees. And in a weird way almost every time after she was checking left and right she would just abruptly look at me, dead in the eyes, almost like. She was checking if I was still there. I just ignored this at first. Brushing it in my head and saying, well she is also human maybe she is also a bit scared. But the feeling of unease never went away. It actually got even worse when I asked my grandpa about that street. Why is that place so dark and why are all the houses abandoned and all the trees so old? My grandpa's face went white. His usual calm and warm smile and eyes just turned into a dead and cold face. He looked me straight in the eyes. And said calm, just do what your mother says. 
And don't think about it. That night I couldn't sleep. What was that place? Why was everybody acting so weird about it? Why was everybody so scared of it? Was it about the wild dogs? Was there something else in that hellish street than abandoned houses and trees? But oh well, I was too scared to act on it. I didn't intend to look into it. As long as my mom was there to protect me I just knew I would be okay. The next day I went as usual for a good old football match. Time to beat those guys 7-2 again I guess. But it was different. There were girls there. Until then it's been just us, the boys. That's until apparently an idiot decided to invite those crying and attention-seeking monsters. Yeah, I didn't really have the dot best relationship with the girls in my town. But there was also somebody else there. Alyssa. With that long dark brown hair, those hazel eyes that looked almost like honey, those big, pink lips like roses. Yeah, even after all this time I can still remember her face. She wasn't like the other girls. She wasn't crying about anything. She was typically pretty quiet and she wasn't seeking attention. But you see, if you didn't get it until now, I've never been the most open person. I've always preferred to keep everything to me, even my feelings. Liam, hey Lucas, look who I gotta watch me play football. Lilith. I should have known Liam was the idiot that invented them. He's always been an attention-seeking guy and he was always trying to prove he was better than me at everything. That is maybe because I was always winning over him at football and grades. This time apparently he was trying to prove he was better with girls than me by inviting the so-called cutest girl in school and her friends. I wasn't really that interested in Lilith to be honest. While the other boys were seeing her outside beauty and expensive clothes I was just seeing her shitty character. She was annoying. And I hated her presence. But for some godforsaken reason she had a little crush on me. And this was maybe her way of looking for my attention. Lilith, I don't think he really cares about me Liam. To be honest, I think he is more interested in Alyssa. Lucas, me, just shut up Lilith. I came here to play football, not to listen to you being rude to everyone and whining about everything. Lilith, so now you do notice me. That means I hit a sensitive spot there. Me, oh for Christ's sake if I hear one more word I swear I will dash. Michael, okay now lion wow. Take it easy. Let's just go play football now shall we? Michael has always been the calm guy of the group. The natural leader I might say. He's always been the one who was solving the group's problems. After that dispute we just went and played our normal match of football. While I was desperately trying to ignore Alyssa's gaze. After the match we just continued to stay outside and talk like usual. But this time of course something had to happen. And that was Lilith. With her stupid idea of playing truth or dare. We just went back and forth with some stupid dares like go and throw an egg on old Betty's house or go knock on a door and run. I've always hated that game. Too irrational and too dangerous for me. It was getting late. My mom was supposed to come and take me at around 11 p.m. It was 10 p.m. and dark outside. We were still playing that goddamn game when David's turn came for a fourth time. He was supposed to answer the question, who do you have a crush on, but he just got red in the face and chose to do a dare instead. Liam, okay then. I challenge you to go and walk until the middle of the street that Luke is going on every night and then come back. David was never the most strong of people. He was by all means weak. Very indecisive, always shy around girls, always quiet. And that challenge even scared me. I don't even want to know what was in David's head. David, can't you give me another challenge? Liam, ah, so the little chicken is scared like usual. Come on can't you at least act like a man when girls are around? Me, Liam, just let him alone. If he doesn't want to do it then just let him be. Liam, you don't have any right to defend him Lucas, you are the one who's always taken home by his mommy, remember? 
That idiot. That goddamn retard. Me, just shut up Liam. Liam, okay look. What about this? We all go there. Except for the girls. And whoever comes back first will have to tell the whole school that the other is way better at football, girls and everything than him. And we will also take the other boys in case there are wild dogs roaming around. That was just stupid and immature. I was about to refuse but then. Alyssa, I think Lucas will win. That was basically it. That's what I needed to find out what was on that street. One push. Me, okay I accept. It has been around 10 minutes since we entered that street. On the whole way I was feeling a small sentiment of unease. One that also Liam and the others were feeling but none of them wanted to say it. We arrived in the middle of the street. We stopped and we just looked at each other for a brief second. Michael, I think we should leave. Liam, I'm not leaving this place before Lucas. Me, and I'm not leaving before Liam. That's when it happened. Exactly as I said my last word, the light went off. The flickering, weak light went out completely. It was complete darkness. We all panicked until Max took his phone out and turned on the light. Bless Max and his phone. Liam, okay Lucas what about we both say it was too boring here and we just didn't have anything to fear about so none of us two won or lost. Lucas, sounds good for me. Let's Leah dash. That's when I heard it. That's when Liam heard it. That's when we all heard it. That laugh. That sadistic, ironic laugh. It sounded almost like the laugh of a child. Maybe even of our age. But it was different from our laughs. It echoed everywhere around us. It echoed through our ears and hearts. Through our spine and legs. Through every part of our body. We were all not able to move. We just couldn't. Elliot, now we really need T.O. leave. Michael, okay everybody. Let's go as fast as possible. But let's also stay calm. Maybe it's just another group of key dash. He barely managed to turn around and to finish his sentence when we all froze again. Max's light was now showing us something. A young girl stayed right in front of us. White, cracked, dry skin. Complete white eyes and small, dry, white lips. No hair on her head. Just blood. Just blood pouring down from the middle of her head, making it look like her actual hair. The only way we realized it was a girl was because of her dress. A dark red, stained, torn apart dress. She looked at us and from her sadistic ironic smile came out a few words leaving so soon. I thought we might play a bit more. Or maybe even forever. That's when she started laughing again. That damn laugh. That mocking laugh. That out of hell laugh. It was pure torture. But that is when the laugh became louder and louder. Louder and louder. Louder and louder. Until it became shrieking. It opened its mouth revealing sharp razor teeth, a black mouth and a rotten mouth full of maggot's tongue. David was the first one that got attacked. That thing just jumped on him and bit through his chest. Taking with its tongue as much of his insides in its mouth as it could. We all started to run. Everybody is running and crying. Praying and begging God to let us live. Crying and begging this thing to let us go away. I was the fastest. I outran everybody. I didn't see what was happening in my back. I was just slowly hearing every one of my friends falling down. Some were screaming, some were crying, some were begging. But all of them were screaming for their mothers. Their protectors. The persons they knew would instinctively protect them. I was so close to the light when I heard my last friend falling behind me. I was so close to it. South close to escaping it. But then I heard it. A faint scream, Lucas. It was the voice of my mother. Without thinking I turned around. 
My biggest mistake. I don't remember anything after that. Only complete darkness. Just a faded memory of people pointing lights at me and crying. I looked at the time on my watch. 11.10 p.m. I woke up in the hospital a few days later. I was injured but not so much as the rest. Max had to get his leg amputated. Elliot lost an ear and a few fingers. But the worst news that I had was about David and Michael. They didn't make it. After their funerals my grandpa told me the story of that street and why I should never go alone there. As the story goes, it was the oldest street in our town. There, a once big church stood. A family didn't have enough money to take care of their child. Their girl. So they let her on the church doorsteps. She grew up to be educated and well-behaved but didn't have a lot of friends. So when she met a group of children she went crazy about it. But sadly one day, while they were playing in the forests next to church, they got attacked by starving wolves. The kids managed to run. But the girl did not. And while she was being eaten she was screaming, and eh, no. Don't leave me. Please. Don't leave me. That's why her troubled soul is now always haunting the street. She is looking for the friends that let her be eaten by animals. Years have passed since that event. Fifteen years to be more exact. Everybody moved out of town. And I mean everybody. It became a ghost town. But me and the rest of my friends kept in touch. For one and only purpose. Revenge. We wanted to take care of that ghost once and for all. So that's what we are doing tomorrow. We are going to go to that old damn town and burn it to the ground. To see who laughs at last. But. Our only problem is that we don't know if that would get rid of the ghost or just free her to roam the world. If the worst comes to be, I want you to take this as an apology and know that me and my friends had only the best intentions. And children, listen to your parents. They know what's best for you.